Hey everyone and happy Sunday. I hope you're all having an excellent weekend so far. My name is Josh and I'm the youth pastor at our Fanshawe campus here at North Park and I'm excited for this morning's teaching. Now, we've been doing kind of the, these uh, weeks of orange curriculum on Sunday mornings for junior high. These great series uh, asking lots of great questions with one another. Uh, but we're going to be taking a, a one, one week break from our orange curriculum uh, because we're going to start a new series next week. But this week we're going to be watching a Bible project video together. Now, now, this Bible project video I'm really excited about because next week is kind of this new, uh, this new week, this new year of school, right? Most of us are going back to school on Tuesday or sometime next week. And, uh, and what I wanted to talk about was this word that we can use to describe God, and that is faithful, or the faithfulness of God and the Hebrew word amet. Now this Bible project video is only about five minutes long, but it's gonna talk a little bit about this word and what it means, and then we'll come back in a couple minutes, again, five minutes, and we'll talk a little bit about it further, and then we'll send you with some questions to talk about afterwards. All right, sound good? Cool, well enjoy these next five minutes. If you tried to describe what God is like, it could be difficult or daunting. But when the people who wrote the Bible pondered the mystery of God, they consistently described God's character in this way compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness. We're going to look at this last characteristic of God. It's the Hebrew word emet, which can be translated as faithfulness or even truth. It's related to another word you've probably heard before, amen, which is an untranslated Hebrew expression meaning that's truth. So, emet can mean truth, and it can refer to correct ideas or concepts. This is because emet has to do with stability and reliability. Like when Moses holds up his hands for hours to defeat Israel's enemies, the Amalekites. His friends put a rock under him and support his hands so that his hands will remain emet, or steady. When emet is used of people, it describes reliable and stable character, or trustworthiness. Like when Moses appoints leaders in Israel, they're to be people of emet, people who are trustworthy, who won't take bribes or distort justice. So to say that God is full of emet doesn't just mean that God tells the truth or stands for truth. It means that God is faithful and trustworthy. This is why Moses calls God a rock, saying that he's faithful, just, and upright. He's saying that he can trust God to be consistent to his character. And the Hebrew word for trust is actually the verb form of the word emet. It's he'emin. It can be translated as to believe or to have faith, but most basically it means to consider someone trustworthy or to trust. The first person we meet in the Bible who considers God to be trustworthy is Abraham. God makes a promise that Abraham and his wife Sarah will have a huge family and that through them, all nations will experience God's blessing. But Abraham and Sarah are really, really old, and they've never been able to have any children. And yet, in the face of these challenges, Abraham means God. He considers God trustworthy to open a way forward. And God does show Emet to Abraham and Sarah. In just four generations, their descendants form a whole nation called Israel. And God invites Israel into a trusting and faithful relationship. And when God leads them out of slavery in Egypt, Israel means in God. They trust and rely on him. But when they come to the land God promised to Abraham, and they find out it's filled with giant cities protected by giants, their trust in God's Emet fails. But eventually, we meet an Israelite who does trust God in the face of giants. It's David. He yells at the giant, You come with a sword and a spear, but I come with the name of the God of Israel. David consistently relies on God. In fact, it said that David walked in and met before God. So David considers God to be faithful and responds with faithfulness. This is why God promises to raise up a faithful descendant of David, whose kingdom will endure forever, or in Hebrew, have emet. This faithful king will become the source of trust and stability for others forever. But when the kingdom later collapses, the Israelites find themselves without a home and without a king. And they cry out, Oh God, where is your loyal love that you swore to David in your emet? They're accusing God of abandoning his promises to Abraham and to David. Is God trustworthy? Is he faithful after all? 
The first line of the New Testament is an answer to that question. This is the lineage of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In other words, through Jesus, God fulfills his promises. Or as Paul says, Jesus came on behalf of God's faithfulness. He is the faithful king whose kingdom will endure forever and who invites all nations to trust God. Now, trusting anyone is risky. It's hard to know if anyone is really full of emet. But the biblical story portrays a God who's been faithful all along and whose promises were fulfilled in the story of Jesus. And so as we look out at the obstacles facing us and our world, we're invited to take that same risk and join Abraham, David, and the people of God in trusting that God is overflowing with faithfulness. Isn't that amazing? The faithfulness of God. Amen, right? That's truth. I love that. I love that video. I love understanding the faithfulness of God and the fact that he follows through on his promises to us. It's just an amazing thing about our God and our creator. And so what I said I'd do is give you some things to talk about after this video is done. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do a quick Google search. You can say uh, promises of God, something as simple as that. And then usually one of the first uh, first items on your Google list is uh, like a BibleStudyTools.com or something like that. Like these great Bible study tools that you can use to look through and read through the promises of God. I know I, I did the quick Google search and I found 50 promises of God. And what I want you to do is read through one of those lists and see which one sticks out to you most. What's the one that resonates with you most? And then I want you to share that with your family. And then the next thing is, what is it that you feel like God has promised to you in this next season? Again, that list of promises, what is it that just makes most sense for this entering into this new school year, the thing that's going to stick with you throughout this next school year? Uh, I think it's really important to identify the things that God promises us and then remembering that he is going to stick to it. He is going to remain faithful because he is a faithful God. And so that's it for us this morning. I hope you can take a couple things away. Uh, think about them a little bit because again, we serve a faithful God and I know that excites me and I hope that excites you and gives you some hope going into this next school year. So I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. We will talk to you very, very soon. We'll see you next week um, and I hope you have a great week. See you guys.